What up folks, it's Alex here, I hope you're all good. Now a bunch of you have messaged asking how to create one of these rolling logo background style effects within DaVinci Resolve. Now, I take absolutely no credit for this idea whatsoever. Peter Bikin made a video showing how to do this within After Effects, which is why a few people have been messaging me asking how to do it in Resolve. So all credit to Peter, he came up with the idea, he put the video out, I'm just showing you how to do a very similar thing within DaVinci Resolve. Now I don't usually do this, I've just had to figure it out for this video. It seems like a logical way to do it, however, if you know of an easier way, a simpler way, do let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, enough of all that, let's boot open DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how. Before we get into Resolve, I just want to show you my logo here. Now this is a PNG file, so all this white area is transparent. It just makes life a whole lot easier if you use a transparent PNG. And you can also see I've got some empty space across the top, bottom and the sides. Again, that just helps with spacing when you get into Resolve. With that out of the way, here's DaVinci Resolve and I'm on the Edit tab currently. Now what we're actually going to do is just create our background within a new project, export it, and then the video file is really easy to import into new projects to use as a background in the future. Now I'm just going to open up my project manager, clicking on the cog in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to use a timeline resolution of 4K. Obviously 4K gives you more scope, you can crop in and do that sort of thing in the future, but it will take longer to render. If you only ever do 1080p and you run a slightly older machine, maybe it's best to stick with 1080p, but it's entirely up to you. In terms of the frame rate, generally speaking, it makes sense just to use the frame rate which you usually edit in. So I usually edit all my videos in 24 frames, so I'm going to stick with 24. Right, with that out of the way, I'm just going to import my logo into my media pool, like so. But we're not actually going to drag it onto the timeline just yet. What we need to do first is open up the effects library, open up the toolbox, go to effects, and then grab a fusion composition and drag that onto your timeline. In terms of length, you want to make this as long as you'll ever need it, basically. I generally don't think I'll ever have a rolling background longer than a minute, so I'm going to just make this one minute in length. If you need longer, make it longer. If you don't think you'll ever need that much, obviously just make it a little bit shorter. Once you're happy with that, just head into the Fusion tab. And hopefully your Fusion will look something like this. The most important area is this one down here, which is our nodes. So just make sure that you've got nodes selected up here so you can see the nodes area. And then from here, open up the media pool, grab your logo and then just drag it down onto your nodes somewhere onto the left like so and release your mouse. And then just drag the little box next to media one over to your media out to link your logo and bring it into Fusion. There's a load of different ways to add nodes. I'm just going to show you the easiest one to show visually, which is in the effects library. So click on the effects library in the top left hand corner, go to tools, transform, and we're going to need two from here. So first we'll grab the crop node, hold your mouse, drag it onto the line over to the right hand side until the line turns yellow and blue like so, and then release that. And then just grab a transform and just repeat the same process like so. So we've got media one, transform, crop, and media out. So click on crop, open up the inspector in the top right hand corner. And all we need to do in here, leave all the settings as they are and just click on keep centered. And it'll just put your logo right in the middle like so. Then head to the transform node. Again, within the inspector, change the edges from canvas to wrap. And what that will do is just duplicate your logo all the way across the project. And then we can just reduce the size. So use the size slider just to reduce that size to whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to go with something about that. Now from here, you can continue to mesh with the size. You can also adjust the angle, do whatever you want to do to get it looking the way that you want it to look. Once you're happy with that, we can then start to animate it, which is dead easy. So under your preview window here, you should see this little timeline. And if you click and hold your mouse, you'll get a little red bar, which you can drag left and right. This is a little timeline. So we're just going to go to the very beginning, the far left, like so. And then in the inspector, again, next to center, which is the top one, click on this little diamond to add a keyframe. And now we want to choose our starting location for the animation. 
So in this example, I'm just going to go from left to right. So I'm going to change the X axis here. Just drag it over to the left. We're going to go all the way over like so. So it's going to start there and end up over here. So our movement is going to be going from left to right. Now you also change the speed from here. Obviously, if I only want it to go really slow, I can start it from here and end about here. And obviously then the movement will be considerably slower than if it starts all the way from the left and goes all the way over to the right. So it's up to you. Just have a play with it until you're completely happy with it. So we're going to go with about that. So that's our starting location. Then we're going to come down to this little timeline again and go right to the end. And now we set our end location. So I'm just going to drag this over now to the right hand side. We'll go with there. And then if we just hit play down here, we can just have a look to see how it's going to look. And again, amend it, change it, slow it down if you want to, just change the keyframes until you're happy. If we head back into the edit tab, we can just hit play and it's going to look a little something like that, which looks pretty good to me. Now you notice the background is black. It's actually transparent, but it's just showing black underneath. We can change that as well. So just head back into the fusion tab. I'm going to move the media out just a little bit further to the right hand side. And we're going to grab this node here from this little shortcut bar. It's called background. And we're just going to drag it here like so. It'll put a merge and a background node down there for you. If your screen goes black like mine has here, don't worry. All you need to do is right click on merge one and select swap inputs to flip them around. And it'll look like that. And then give the background node a click. In the inspector again, you can then just go from the color wheel and select all of the colors that you want. Now generally, because we're going to re-import this as a video clip, I'm not going to make it black and white or reduce the opacity or anything just yet, because we can do that later on. I'm just going to leave it full color and full opacity. So then we're going to head into the deliver tab and just render it out like you would any other project. So I'm just going to use H.264 master. Note, it will take longer to render than a normal video project because it's fusion, it's creating it all on the fly essentially. It will take a little while to render, especially if you've done it at 4K. Once that's all rendered, you can then start a new project and just import it like you would any other video clip like I have here. Drag it onto my timeline and it looks something like this. Now obviously from here, you're free to transform it. You can zoom, you can crop, you can do whatever you want to do. And you can also just adjust the opacity just to bring that down if you want to make it a little bit darker. Also, give it a click, head into the color tab. You can tweak any of the colors, lower the saturation, do all those usual stuff you would in Resolve until you're completely happy with it. And it's as easy as that. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs up, any comments or feedback down below. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. Until next time, see ya.